So we talked 3A now. The UIL did something a little bit unprecedented with Division I. They actually split the teams into different regions in the Central Texas area. You have West, Teague, and Grosbeck headed to Region Two. When you look at the draw for the Goats, the Lions, and the Trojans, what do you, what do you see ahead? Uh, it, it's certainly a challenge. Um, look, going into Region 2 is right into the Lions' Lions den. I mean, this is this is uh, they are stepping on a hornet's nest there in Region Two because you're dealing with Grandview, of course, the back-to-back -back state champions, as well as Pottsboro, who played for a championship last year. Gladewater, a team that is 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 always a perennial power as well. Uh, plus a number of really really dangerous squads like Malakoff that played for a title a year before. Uh, Fairfield, who's a 4A drop down. I mean, it is absolutely a murderer's row there. That's not even a county team like Winsboro that could be on the rise. So. It's no easy task for them. You know, that said, I do think that both of them have a, a, a great chance. Uh, uh, Teague especially has a chance to make the playoffs. I love what they're able to do, uh, you know, uh, uh, offensively. I think that this is a team that, that their offense is going to lead the way early. And the defense, which was young last year, has a chance to really take that step forward. I'm interested in what Teague has to do. You know, for, for West, um, this is a squad that, that obviously in there with the district champions uh, in, uh, in Grandview. The one thing I will say, though, is that I feel like that District 7 is pretty well stratified. Uh, I think that you've got kind of a top four. Grandview's going to be really good. Uh, I expect Dallas Madison not to, not to skip a beat. Uh, Whitney figures that they're going to be in the mix as well. And then probably West. I'm comfortable slotting West in that top four. And then you've got three squads, Dallas A-plus Academy, uh, uh, Dallas Life Oak Cliff, and then Naperl that have been struggling recently. That feels relatively well stratified and gives West, I think, an opportunity to feel like uh, yeah, with a team that does bring back a remarkable amount of experience, 19 starters from last year's squad. Uh, the Trojans look like they are they're heading for the playoffs, uh, at least as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, heading into 2020. You mentioned a hornet's nest, so let's move to Region 3, where sledgehammers <laughs> live everywhere. District 11, I'm just going to – how do you sort through this mess? <laughs> you, you really don't kind of sort through this mess you just kind of say all right i'm excited to see what happens whenever they uh tow meets leather because this is going to be a, a a war every single week uh we start with rockdale i think that rockdale is probably the the uh the team that we 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 look at as the favorite uh, to win this district even though they were a team that got bounced in the first round now admittedly they got bounced in the first round uh by the eventual state champions but the experience that they bring back with eight starters back on both sides of the school, uh, of the ball, I think they are going to make a big impact. If that secondary can come along, they're going to be in the mix. We got Troy slotted in second. I'm really high on Troy. Zach Urbacic, their the running back, is just a, 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 he's a war daddy, man. He is a guy that you can hand the ball off to 100 times in a game. He won't get tired, and they are going to grind opponents into dust. My question is going to be on the defensive side, and furthermore, they have to replace a really, really athletic secondary. That's a question that I have uh, for, for Troy. Then you have Cameron Yo. Cameron Yo, who is just very quietly bobbing along, 11-2, and two, da -da -da, nobody pay attention to them. All three of these teams lost to Grandview, by the way. Uh, this is a team that I think up front defensively has a chance to be really, really special. Really special. They've got a team that uh, – a group of defensive linemen that I think are going to be really good. But basically everywhere else, they're doing some rebuilding. It's going to be a big question for Tommy Brashear and company. Can they rebuild, especially at the skill position spots, you know, we've come to know Cameron Yeo as having these superstar uh, offensive weapons. They're going to need a couple of those to develop. That's not even to mention Lorena. And, and I know that Lorena, it was a disappointing year last year to miss the playoffs at 5-5. Five and five. Uh, But I do think I expect them to be back, especially on the, on the heels of, uh, of, of bringing back what should be a really good back half of the defense. The secondary and the linebacker core looks really good for the Leopards. Uh, we've, got, we've got Academy just on the outside looking in, but I'm really high on them, especially offensively. They bring back nine starters offensively. I think that they are a potential spoiler for anybody. Uh, but I'll say that even the bottom of that district, with Caldwell and McGregor, uh, those are teams that are going to challenge everyone that they play. There's no off weeks in District 11, 11 3A Division One, And every single week you're going to have some surprising results simply because I think that uh, that top of the district is going to get a lot of attention, but that bottom of the district I think is actually on the rise as well. And that's going to make for a really, really fun district race. When you look down at Division Two. All three of the Division school, two schools here in our area, outside of Franklin, who a drop down you have winning the district, but then the other three, Rogers, Clifton, and Reese will come in at three, four, and six in 13-3 Division Two. What's the story in Division Two this year? So, yes. Yeah. 
Is it the loss big, of experience? Uh, a big thing is that it's just it's just a loss of experience. A lot of the the, the known commodities, a lot of the real superstars of this uh, of this uh, in Division Two uh, are gone. And as a result, they're going to have to find these new guys to step up in, in, in their stead. Uh, look, I think Franklin, the drop down from Division One, probably starts the, the year as the favorite in 3A or in 13, 3A Division II. Uh, a lot of that just has to do with the pedigree. And they are the most experienced squad coming back. They bring back, uh, you know, nine starters off offensively, six on defense. Uh, that, that experience is going to serve them well, especially early and especially if we're dealing with a truncated. Um, especially with uh, if we're dealing with a truncated um, uh, schedule. That's something that I think is going to be really interesting. But past that, look, 13-3A Division Two I think, is wide open, and, and there's no real known commodities there. Uh, I, I think that Clifton has a chance to really make some noise. I love what they bring back as far as the running game is concerned. Keep an eye on Rodgers. Obviously a fantastic year last year, 11, 11 wins. I think they're a team certainly to keep an eye on. And then Riesel. You mentioned Riesel. This is a team that made the playoffs. I think that was a big step forward for them. For them to be able to be able to do that, bringing back a fair amount of their team from last year. 17 starters from last year's squad. My question is going to be up front, especially from a size perspective. This is a relatively undersized Riesel squad. If they're able to put it together uh, up front and kind of play the trenches to a draw, I think that they're a sleeper there that could end up spoiling somebody's season if they're able to grab that fourth playoff spot. That is the story for 3A. We'll talk 2A when we see you next time.